Samuel, I think we both said sort of before the festive period that, you know, if United had lost to West Ham, Villa and Nottingham Forest, there would maybe be insurmountable pressure on Eric Ten Hag's job. They lost two of them. But is there any point in changing the manager right now while there is this takeover situation occurring? And like you said, bigger decisions probably to be made at the club rather than the manager right now. See, I, I think there is a there is probably a compelling argument now to change. I, I'm still not at that point of writing the Ten Hag must must go piece. Had they lost both games last week, then I don't see how they couldn't not have sacked him. They'd have had what 15 defeats and lost six games in December. And look, managers have been sacked for less than what we've seen from United this season. If if a manager had presided over this kind of season at Bayern Munich or Real Madrid, they would have they'd have been long gone. And I get it that United operate in a different way and there's a lot of context to it as well. And uh, because there's been a power vacuum there as well, that, that has actually made Ten Hag's job secure. We can't say that now because although Ineos are still waiting for the regulatory approval, any big decision that United are due to take has to be signed off by them. And okay, yeah, if, if, if Ten Hag is to go, it's going to be in your saying to Joel Glazer, we want a change of manager, can we have that signed off? It's not going to be John Murtagh going to Joel Glazer and saying, I think we need a change because everyone knows he's on borrowed time and whenever the, there is a, a man, whenever the next managerial change comes at Manchester United, I think it's safe to assume that it's not going to be John Murta, um presiding over that process as he did with with Ten Hag in, in 2022. But the argument is that because January is so clear, that I think they can have technically a maximum of four games because if they were to draw with Wigan, it triggers a replay. They've got the Tottenham game. If they get through in the FA Cup, it's a fourth round. But realistically, I think we all expect them to have three games uh, this this month unless 18th place Wigan of, of League One somehow um, p- p- pull off a shot next Monday and where it's so clear there's there's the argument that change manager new coach comes in he coaches the players within, in, within an inch of their lives uh, with a view to having a very good run in where they could finish in the top four and possibly win the FA Cup the the drawback, if they were to do that, is that I don't know who that new manager would be because there is not a compa- there's not a compelling available candidate out there, and I think that's the th- that is now, now that Ineos are pretty much on board, that's what's keeping Ten Hag in in the role. You look at Graham Potter; he didn't have the um, the personality to handle Chelsea, and okay, I think he was probably the wrong man at the wrong club at the right at the wrong time. And that wasn't entirely his fault. But he he doesn't have the personality to manage Manchester United. I'm not convinced of that whatsoever. Uh, Zindin Zidane, if he was so you know such a compelling uh, coaching candidate for these other big clubs, he'd have been appointed by another big club by now. His situation at Real Madrid was so, so unique. And even United know that as well. He's never been in the run-ins takeover at United. Even going back to 2018, when it was all kicking off between Mourinho and Pogba, it was just... He was he was the available name, so of course he was going to be on on the top of Bookie's chalkboards. Um, who else is there? Like Hansi Flick, is there going to be a demand for him? I don't think so. Uh, Hulen Lopetegui couldn't hack it at Wolves. Why why would you have him at, at United? There's there's no one out there who there's not a coach out there who is unattached at the moment. Um, Neil Warnock, you wouldn't have him either. No nobody is is a compelling case to come in. Whereas with Van Gaal in uh, 2015, well, it 16, sounds like Wayne Rooney's about to be sat yeah. like Birmingham. So <laughs> I would, I would be, I'd be extremely worried. In, in fact, Bruce Seb saying he has been sacked now. So oh, has he? <laughs> wow. wow. While we're on air, so <laughs> there's he coming. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get me making a, a case for that. But that's, um, I think, possibly the, the the funniest thing about that. I mean, it's not funny that someone has lost their job at all, but. I t- the funny figure in all that is uh, the, the, the clown Gary Cook, who used to be at Manchester City. And when you think of what he said about Rooney earlier in the season, that appointment, my goodness, why, why is he even at a football club? Well, yeah, well, I mean, I guess to bring that on to Ten Hag, though, do you think there is an argument to say, look, Ten Hag's almost had his hands tied working in this structure. Does he not deserve a chance in 
this new look United to prove himself as a manager almost again. Because I know like it's being used in favour of Potter. It said, well, Potter was part of this this set up at Chelsea where he's destined to fail. Do you not think there's an argument to say, well, Ten Hag's had similar at United where, look, if you put him in a, in a fo- proper football structure, he might still be the, the man for United or are you not convinced sort of bottom line on that? No, because I, I think in fairness, I think United have had a structure. It's not it's not right and it's it, it needs fixing. But I mean, th- there's the occasional pundit who goes, oh, they don't even have a sporting director. Well, no, they don't by title, but they do have a football director. Like they're, they're pretty much the same thing. It's just... Yeah, you're going to rebatch it. Fools, about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, precisely. But they've got head of football operations, head of recruitment, head of scouting, head of uh, data. They've got a uh, football transfer negotiator. I think literally every, they've got a technical director. I think every position you'd expect a big club to have in a structure, they have got someone in it, as far as I can see. I, I don't think I'm really missing out anything. Okay, at the moment, the chief executive is an interim, but I think that's going to be addressed pretty soon uh, with, with Brailsford and Jean-Claude Blanc coming onto the football board. And they they need to you know, clarify who's, who's going to occupy that role because it's an extremely important role as well. But they need they need different personnel in there. They need a recruitment specialist because just look at the look at the hit rate in the last ten to fifteen years. Um, it's it's dire. It, it, it's so so poor. And they didn't have the courage when they were when they, when they made that inaugural football director appointment. One, they couldn't even call him a director of football for whatever reason. But also, they looked to someone on their own doorstep, and they were telling us around the time of the. Um, Solskjaer's permanent appointment that they were close to appointing a technical director I mean the 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 title kept changing names it was a technical director it was a director of football it was a football director in the end and then it was a football director and a technical director appointed simultaneously and there's been merit in that because Darren Fletcher it's not that he knows the club or anything like that he's a vital conduit in that he he is he's across the academy so he'll know which players from the academy um, that they've got an eye on to come into the into the first team, come come into first team training. Mert has got a lot of experience. Uh, he, he jointly ran the academy at one point, so there is a, there is some merit to having Mert in a more administrative role at the football club because, of course, Ineos are not just taking over the first team. It's obviously the academy. It's the women's team as well. Mert helped recruit the players uh, for the women's team when um, they entered the the second tier of the WSL. In, in 2018. So I, I've, I, I don't have a great deal of sympathy for Ten Hag at the moment. The injuries, yeah, if, if you've got that some like 10 or 11 players missing at Forest, fair enough, that is going to take its toll. But you look at the team that they, you look at the team they put out in these games where they lose, you still look at it and you think that should be, if they're all performing, that should be good enough 